Hey, everybody. Welcome on back. It's the Rubbing His Racing Podcast. It's brought to you by NASCAR. Uh, so we got two drivers in and two to go as we're heading into Martinsville. The Xfinity 500 NASCAR Cup Series race at Martinsville Speedway. It's going to be this Sunday, um, October 29th at 2 p.m. And you can catch all the action on NBC. Uh, just going to start off the show with saying that we have a special guest today. Um, we have a special announcement um, that Spider, Quiggs, Liam, Mike, Chase, they're all very, very proud of. So we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. But it's a good one. It, it's a good one for the show. And it's and uh, and I think it's going to be pretty exciting for us, particularly on Phoenix weekend. So we're going to get to that. I don't know why, but I, I thought I'd start uh, this week off with a question of the week. wasn't sent in by anybody. It's just something that's been kind of going around. We speak ad nauseum about... Uh, about Harvick retiring, right? Everyone is relatively, I don't not upset about it, but, you know, a little bit emotional about seeing this guy drive away. You had the forever race this past weekend and all the accolades that he rightfully deserves. I'm asking you two guys because I respect you more than any two other people in the world. And that's the God's honest truth. God's honest truth. Um, who do you follow next year? with Harvick being gone. If you're a Harvick guy, true and true, and I think we know what Harvick guys are. I think they're, by the way, O'Shea uh, Jackson. O'Shea Jackson McCarthy, for people who are watching this on YouTube, this is my uh, Welsh Terrier, seven or eight years old. He's a good boy. He's sitting in sitting in this week. Same, same. Uh, What's Blue Cheese up to? Blue Cheese, uh, Blue Cheese is my French Bulldog that I hate. Uh, she got stung on the paw today by a hornet, and so her <laughs> paw blew up like a canned ham. O'Shea's going to spend the night with his grandparents in Brooklyn um, as we nurse the one that I hate back to health. And uh, so that's it. Same dog that JFK had. The dog that said, hey, why don't you take the top down when they were going through Dallas? Not a lot of people. I thought it, was a, thought it was a schnauzer. So schnauzers sometimes a little bit smaller and also Airedales are bigger. So this looks like an Airedale that was thrown in the dryer. So that's O'Shea <laughs> Jackson right there. Um, but anyway, so we know all about Kevin Harvick fans. When we go and we see them at the races, um, you know, they don't have a lot of body piercings. What do you think they're going to, who do you think they're going to follow next year? I mean, obviously we hope that people who follow Kevin Harvick will continue to follow NASCAR now that he's gone, especially since he's going to be in the booth and still be a presence. Who's your guy's choice for that? Can I go first I, on this one? Yeah, go ahead. Quiggs. Oh, Ch Quiggs is chomping at the... Well, not, well, I couldn't think of one. I couldn't get one. And then something just clicked right before we started filming. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking... More like along the terms of like lifetime, who do you replace um, Kevin Harvick with if you're a fan? And I think the guy is Ty Gibbs. Really? What? Yeah. I, what? Yeah. I didn't have him on I my was about to say, list. Quiggs, I, know, I was I about to say we're either. gonna have the same answer, and then you throw out Ty Gibbs. Let me Ty hear Gibbs. this logic, please. I just want. Well, I think a lot of it is he looks like his son. Um, which is probably actually that's probably like ninety percent. I, I see that. Um, I see that. But good guy, clean. He's gonna be racing for a long time. So if you pick him, you're gonna have a guy that's gonna be there uh, forever. Um, I think. I don't know. I think a lot of it. Who Who is your guy? Like, are you going like a oh Kyle Larson or are you going? No, like I'm giving a, you two picks. I'm gonna give you two picks. Who, Spider, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, excuse me, I'm yeah. gonna let you go second because I am I'm stunned by that. Does Ty gives a bad answer. I I believe me, we're I Ty can't Gibbs. I can't believe you use the adjectives clean and like like nice or whatever you said there. That was crazy. Don't get me wrong, I'm a Ty Gibbs guy, but I'll call a spade a spade. Sometimes well, think Ty Gibbs he, he's not like the a, cleanest a car in the car wash. No, I think like my my daughter is a huge Ty Gibbs fan. I've told you that. Like you know, my family are big Ty Gibbs people. He's been very nice too, like shooting little videos for us and whatnot. So I'm a huge, I'm a big fan. And I know the, you know the detractors about who his grandfather is, which is stupid because everyone's related to somebody in NASCAR. I just I didn't expect I didn't expect you to go there. I don't know why. If, if your daughter was born in the '80s, she'd be a, a Harvick fan. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I you know what you probably well. So did you think people became Harvick fans? Um, after Dale had passed away, do you think because he stepped into the seat, or do you think they went elsewhere? Because I could see maybe uh, Earnhardt guys also kind of liking Harvick, right? Because he didn't have a happy-go-lucky demeanor all the time. The happy nickname was sort of uh, ironic, like people who call me Tiny. So I, I don't know if that was the natural progression, because if that was the case, then Josh Berry is the answer. 
right? Because Josh, also, also just the the overarching like NASCAR fandom and guys who are your driver or whatever is such a weird thing. Yeah. It's not like a concrete like this is my NFL team. Like it's very fluid, and it's almost like there's there's like tiers of guys. It's like guys you like. Mm-hmm. Guys who just aren't really on your radar and guys you hate. And, yeah, there's I don't know. It's it's just not like a one day you become a fan of this guy or whatever. It's kind of – you can have multiple drivers and that kind of just makes it a little bit weird for, like, this question a tiny bit. But Spider, the floor is yours on this one. What yeah, you, I want to hear it from Spider. Give it to me. Yeah, I, I, to answer your question, it's not automatically Josh Berry. In fact, I think Josh Berry has a lot of uh, work to do in that regard. Don't get me wrong. I respect the way that he's done things and uh, got to where he's going to be next year. Um, I think Tony Stewart said it well. He didn't take any shortcuts or, you know, just he isn't a rich kid just funding his own ride. Um, so I respect Josh Berry for that. But in terms of, like, replacing Kevin Harvick with Josh Berry, that feels like a tremendous, tremendous um, downgrade. Again, with all due respect to Josh, he's Mm -hmm. got a lot to prove. I think if he's going to be respected like Kevin Harvick is by the fans, he's going to have a lot of winning to do, which I'm not super optimistic about given the current status of uh, Stuart Haas Racing. I would say if you're going to stick with Stuart Haas Racing, in my opinion, the safe pick to replace Harvick for Rooting wise would be Chase Briscoe in the 14. I think he's the most tenured driver at Stuart Haas Racing. Uh, I mean, obviously Eric Almirola, but who knows what's going to happen right. with him. But let's pretend Eric hangs it up. Chase is automatically the most veteran driver at Stuart Haas Racing. He's exciting. He runs fun paint schemes. He's competitive. He can win. He's proven last year he's a playoff driver. He's also. Um, I don't know. As I said, he's like the captain of that team, I see. And he's young. So back to Quiggs' point about Ty Gibbs, I think Chase Briscoe is a guy that's going to be around a long time. If you're loyal to Ford or Stuart Haas Racing, he'd probably be my pivot. That being said, uh, you also have to keep in mind that Stuart Haas Racing could potentially be changing to Chevy um, at the end of next season, allegedly, as the rumor boards say. So if that's the case and you're still loyal to Ford and you want to rock with a Ford, you might pivot to someone like Ryan Blaney. I would say him and Chase Briscoe would probably be my first two picks for who I would root for. If I were a Kevin Harvick fan after he retires, they would uh, take my fandom. So I think Blaney's another good option. He's in a great Ford team. Um, he's another guy that's relatively young, will be around a long time, has good equipment, has proven that he's very competitive and you know can race with the best of them. So it would probably be Blaney 1, Briscoe 2. But it all depends on you know, if you're a fan of Stuart Haas, if you're a fan of Ford, if you're a fan of Harvick, Chevy, et cetera. And that's what so it comes, I let the Harvick fans decide for themselves. And that's what it comes down to, right? So you, you like, like Quiggs is saying, driver, maker, or manufacturer, rather, team, that type of thing. So, I, yeah, I, I would probably say that mine would be Briscoe as well. If you're going Blaney 1, I'll take Briscoe as my one, just because he's got so much personality lately, too. Like with the Talladega Knights thing, it seems like SHR is – Jeff Gordon had mentioned this week how drivers need to develop more of personality to get people, you know, to follow them in particular. And there are a couple of guys who I think are going to be able to do that well. We're pretty close with Briscoe. I think he might be the guy. I also think, like, maybe if Noah winds up back in somewhere that makes sense. Like, I think a Noah Gregg – going from Kevin Harvick to maybe a young kid like Noah Gregson, unproven – but I think you're going to get to see him for a long time as long as he stays off fucking social media. Like, maybe he's a dark horse, you know? But um, t- that, was, that was my original answer. Bullshit. I would have said. Before I, <laughs> it was before I switched the time. I would have said Zane Smith if he sticked with Ford camp. But since he's jumped, I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. I So, we're going to close off uh, Kevin Harvick's career as a racer. And... Um, yeah, best of luck to the Harvick fans uh, choosing. They got a pretty, you know, wild. Th- and then you can't go Denny, you can't go Truex because you're just going to run into this problem within the next couple of years. You know, Kyle Busch, obviously, those guys are moving out. So I guess from the young guns, we probably have them all covered. All right, um, headlines. Not a ton of headlines this week uh, as we're getting towards the end of the season. Uh, Cola Grayson did announce that Chandler Smith will not return to their Xfinity Series program in 2024. Uh, their drivers lineup will be announced in the coming weeks, and everyone's really looking forward to see what the fuck Colleg is going to do. 
Um, and Smith's landing spot is yet to be announced. But unofficially, he's going back to Toyota and Joe Gibbs' Xfinity team. Um, Smith's only 21 years old. Uh, he's in his rookie season. He has one win, three poles, eight top fives, 12 top ten finishes this season. But he enters next week's race at Martinsville in seventh place, 54 points below the cut line. So I think a good rookie season, a good driver that you'd want to have on your team, and he's gone from Colleg possibly going to Joe Gibbs Racing. We wish him uh, the best of luck. How's our relationship with him? Have we had Chandler I, on? I know we've bumped into him. No, we we invited him in after the Jeb, uh, the Jeb Burton incident, and he um, made that like montage, including my tweet when I told Jeb to go kick some ass. But uh, <laughs> he declined the invite. But since he declined the invite, and I took the under on him for declining the invite on the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, I've actually spent a couple – I've met him a couple times at the racetrack, and he's always been cool to us. So I'm a Chandler Smith fan, and I'm also excited by this move because it sounds like – Chandler Smith not only uh, will be going to Joe Gibbs Racing in the Xfinity Series, but uh, Sheldon Creed, another one of our favorite Xfinity drivers, who is leaving RCR, it sounds like him and Chandler Smith are potentially joining the Joe Gibbs Xfinity program, which I love. Um, and another reason I love that is because Joe Gibbs Racing Xfinity program lost another driver I really like, Sammy Smith, um, and as he's going to junior motorsports. So I think... Um, Getting two guys to replace Sammy Smith, I love it. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be pulling for Joe Gibbs Xfinity Racing more next year. Let's go Sheldon. Let's go Chandler Smith. I will say I was a little surprised by the the verbiage. Is that even a correct verbiage? Word? Yeah, verbiage. Uh, verbiage of the colleague statement. I know colleague shares a, an engine alliance with RCR, but it also seems like they share a public relations department with RCR as well. We saw RCR with the kind of cold statement of Tyler Reddick when he decided to go to 2311, and we kind of saw a similarly cold message here as they said Chandler Smith would be leaving the team. They didn't wish him best luck. It was just very... Um, it was just what it needed to be. Nothing more, no well wishes, nothing. It seemed kind of like a breakup. So I'm curious to see if there's a more to the story there. Was Chandler upset that he didn't get a look for the cup ride and the cup car was given to Daniel Hemrick? Who knows? But um, it definitely seemed like they didn't necessarily end on the best of relationships. But I'm, I'm pulling for Chandler um, next year and in the future. So... Hopefully he'll be good in the Joe Gibbs equipment. I, I will tell you guys that it's a waste to do it this week, but on our final show of the year, I'm going to have all of the um, the silly season wrapped up. Like I'll have who's going to be in what car because I can't keep track of it anymore. I'm starting I'm yeah. starting to really lose. I I, like the Daniel Hemrick thing, I'm like, did I even know that? But I know we've announced it on this. So it's – and again, I think you mentioned it last week, Quiggs. It's our first season really paying attention to it on a week-by-week -week basis, but um, – but it's all over the fucking place. That's the only real headline that I'm going to talk about this week. I did get a couple of DMs. One of them was from a guy named Jordan Daniels. I'm an idiot, right? So I'm an idiot. So I keep saying how I want to go to Dawsonville um, when Chase wins a race and have a couple of beers. Like, it just seems like something I want to do. And this guy named Jordan Daniels says, Large, you mentioned beers at Dawsonville Pool Room. Unfortunately, they do not serve alcohol there. I'm extremely disappointed at this news. Extremely. He's like, it's like a burger joint with some pool tables. I live in a different rural Georgia town, and we have two pool rooms. Neither serve beer. I guess it's a deep south Bible Belt thing. Lived here my whole life. It's normal, but weird as fuck. That's his words, not mine. I'm going to tell you... I don't find it to be normal. I don't find it to be weird as fuck. I find it to be very disappointing. I thought I'd be slugging beers. At, it's the Bible Belt, man. Like, you, like I remember in Charlotte, which is not like it gets a little city wash from being in the Bible Belt. But um, I worked at a Harris Teeter growing up, the grocery oh, store. Oh, Harris Teeter. Nice. And, and su Sundays, you can't buy uh, alcohol before 12. And, like, people don't really know that because for the most part people aren't trying to buy alcohol before 12 but the amount of people that would come in on a sunday in panthers gear headed to a tailgate mm -hmm. wanting to, wanting to grab a, a 24 pack of miller light and i'd be at the register being like hey sorry can't do it like they just there's a bunch of like laws down there about which i don't think this is i think this is probably for dawsonville more a moral mm -hmm. thing than a law i'm sure if they wanted to sell alcohol they could but but we're not asking that is surprising we're not asking for them to be playing porn in the background 
Like, you know what I mean? I'm just, no. I'm just asking for an ice cold beer with awesome Bill from fucking Dawsonville. That, that would be like a dream scenario uh, of mine. So that, that scenario has been crushed by a gentleman named Jordan Daniels, and I'm going to move on and figure out where my next uh, boozing thing is going to be. Uh, last week, we pointed out that John Hunter uh, Nemechek, well, Nemechek, excuse me, will have raced for all three manufacturers once he starts next season. I know we were saying maybe he's the first to do it, and then we're like, no, I don't think so. So we're kind of going back and forth, agreeing that there's probably been other people to do it. Um, Jake, a gentleman named Jacob had wrote in, um, he knows that multiple people have rode or driven, excuse me, for the three manufacturers, but Casey Kane ran for the most manufacturers in NASCAR. Everham, Everham Motorsports in a Dodge, Dodge, Petty Motorsports in a Ford, Red Bull, Red Bull Racing in a Toyota, and then Henrik in a Chevy. I don't know anyone else who has ran for all four modern manufacturers like Casey did. So we, I love we, that. Yeah, I like that one. Shout out to whoever sent that in. What did you say their name was? Jacob. Jacob hit us with Jacob, that. Jacob, I appreciate it, Jacob. We got a couple uh, comments after that. I was getting replies. Um, shout out to everyone who listens and, and kind of fact checks us on this stuff because we're, we're curious to learn the history. A couple people were saying um, Kurt Busch as well, but as, as far as Casey Kane, he definitely takes P1 because Kurt Busch, I believe, has actually, I think he's had three. Right. But again... Check, fact check us on that but yeah we love it so shout out to everyone who um chimes in i don't mind being fact checked that's one of the reasons why we're doing this like we're, we're we're hoping that casual guys are learning as alongside of us and i'm honestly um looking forward to hearing to who other people think should replace harvick uh yeah in the fandom because i know there's people that we missed that probably make a ton of sense so honestly dms are always open um, Sound off in the comments who, who yeah. you Harvick fans are switching to. 100%. Let's get to the race, shall we? This is the recap and the over-under, and it's brought to you by Coca-Cola. Is it the best Coke ever? You'll have to ha find out and uh, have a taste. I've been enjoying Coke Zeros this whole season. I've only had a couple before we jumped on board with them, and now it's my go-to for everything. Every time I go to a movie, Coke Zero. Every time I go to a restaurant, I ask specifically for Coke Zero. I got a bunch of them in my fridge, so they've made me a believer in this thing, and I think you will be too. Uh, zero sugar. So go after this. Enjoy your race. Enjoy Coke Zero, and uh, and have a good time. We appreciate Coke being on board with us. We're hoping they're back next year, obviously. Um, is the best ever, like I said. Go and find out for yourself, you lazy pricks. All right, so here's the recap. Uh, trucks, congrats to Carson Hosevar. Carson Osovar is a stud the more that I get to know about this guy. When he went down and grabbed his knee in center field during the kickball game, Spider, I, I, th I thought bad things, man. I was like, this kid made a huge mistake. Yeah, I was very worried. Kickball during the season, you know. But he popped up. Uh, he won the Truck Series race on Saturday. It's his fourth win of the season. He advances to the championship four in Phoenix. So it's Corey Heim, Hosovar, Ben Rhodes, and Grant Enfinger. Um, last year's champ, Jane Smith, Zane Smith, who we've had on um, with the Long John Silvers uh, scheme that one time. Uh, he had a tough time picking his favorite meal. But Zane Smith did not make it in and was disqualified Saturday after failing post-race inspection. Uh, the final race of the year will be Friday, November 5th, during no, excuse me, November 3rd, during championship weekend in Phoenix, and that's going to be the Lucas Oil 150. And as I alluded to earlier, we're going to be there. We're going to be in Phoenix. We can't fucking wait to get there. Um, that was in the trucks in the Xfinity. Congrats to Sam Meyer, uh, Sam Mayer. That's his fourth win of the season, uh, the fourth win of his career. He's got his first win this season. Uh, it's his first on an oval. I remember the uh, Ty Gibbs line. Uh, remember where he said, I'm so glad he got to get his second win when I was going for my 13th. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little. He little bro did. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna, I wonder if it's one of the better lines. We got a pretty good line from this week too, but I wonder if it's one of the better lines in a season that gave us Denny Hamlin saying, I just beat your favorite driver. I mean, that, that might be the best, but the Ty yeah. Gibbs one. That was. Yeah. Ty Gibbs one isn't bad. It's like, oh, it's adorable. Enjoy your second. I just got my 13th. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, the Har he, Harvick fans. Love yeah, that. right. Quiggs, he's just like Harvick with that line. That's something Harvick would <laughs> yeah. say. But no, but Sam Mayer. So finally uh, gets one on an oval. He's only had him um, on a road courses before then. Uh, he beat out our guy, Riley Herbst, who came in P2. I, I set that script. I said, Riley, imagine you're out in Las Vegas popping bottles with fucking models, you know, with your whole family. And then your second win comes the following week in Miami when you're out there with just, you know, 
drinking Cuba Libres with the most beautiful women on the planet, but he couldn't get it done. He gave him P2. So right now it's only Mayer locked into the championship four. John Hunter Nemechik is 44 points above the cut line. I keep calling them Nemechik for some reason. I apologize. And then it's Cole Custer, Austin Hill, and Little Gator all bunched up within three points of the cut. So Xfinity is a little bit of a tighter thing with only Sam Mayer um, a guaranteed spot in the championship. So and their final race two- before Phoenix is the Dead on Tools 250 from Martinsville this Saturday at 3.30 p.m. on USA. Um, are, we, are we starting to get more uh, towards Xfinity? I, I know that I'm, I'm leaning towards these guys. I think I'm it- loving the lower series. Yeah. Truck race, you said we're going on, on uh, in Phoenix to the truck race, but I'm going to try to make it a more effort to get to the truck races and uh, – Xfinity as well. I think Xfinity, I'm kind of starting to buy into the fact that Xfinity is neck and neck with Cup. So, yeah. I, I'm a trucks guy. Yeah. I think I'd rather watch it. I don't, the trucks are just so cool, especially Miami. Like just the, them coming out of the turns and being so spread out. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I like the trucks a Miami's lot. Miami's a great track. Like, I, I, I remember it being a very long day for us when we were down there. Um, in the heat, and it was a big drive back to Miami and stuff like that. I don't think I appreciated just how fun of a track where you can get so many people. You can go three wide pretty easy. Um, the next gen car runs very well there. It's a very fun race to watch all weekend long. I mentioned next gen car, but obviously the trucks in Xfinity too. It's a fun track. I, I, I gotta I gotta get back. But the Cup Series uh, came in on Sunday. It was a clean race through the first two stages. An interesting race. Like, you had Larson win stage one, Blaney win stage two. They were battling back and forth. But I think there was – I don't know if there were any cautions in the first two stages, right? And then everything changed. Maybe one. Was there one? I yeah, maybe. So. Somebody spun right. just on but, their own. But, but right, for, for a good racing track and a pretty good race, it was clean. And then with 55 yeah. to go – um, Larson hits the sand barrier heading to a green flag pit stop behind Blaney. I, I'm going to put him as one of my unders later on. It just seems like a stupid fucking move. And I don't know if you guys feel different about it. Does anyone feel I do. As I do feel different. Me? Go ahead. I do feel different. Fuck it. Uh, he's already got in through the championship four. He's going <laughs> for the win. He's trying to close the gap. Like he's, he's trying. I don't know. Uh, to me, he's got nothing to lose. Granted, obviously, um, it sucked. And not the result you want, but at the end of the day, he's already through to the championship four, and uh, I like the aggressiveness. That's what it's going to take to win a championship. So keep that same energy, Kyle, and let's go win this fucking thing. Let's cash that championship future. But don't you see, like the guy? So he's he's very well aware that the guy who was in front of him was below the cut line. Blaney was below the cut line going into the race. He had won stage two, so he's gaining points. Like Blaney cannot fuck this race up. Right. Like Blaney, the last thing he needs is to speed on pit row. So he's not going into that yellow line, then jamming on it, getting down to whatever, 45 miles, whatever the hell it was. Like, I I just expected more from him because being aggressive, what's he going to make up? You know, like that's. Uh, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Quick, give it to me. What's he going to make up? Well, no, no, no. You are right. Like, obviously. I think we can all say, like, Kyle Larson fucked that up, seeing as he ran, yeah, into, ran into the a sand, bunch right. of buckets of <laughs> yeah. sand. Um, but he was, like, I think he was about, like, 1.2, 1.3 seconds behind Blaney. And in that little gap, like, basically eliminated that. By he closed the gap. By kind of going a little more. Like, Blaney was going, I think, way slower than drivers really, like, go into that. Like, everybody kind of goes as fast as they can, hits the brakes, make sure they're good by the time they get to the line. Blaney was going, like, exceptionally slow mm-hmm. into that, like, way slower than Harvick expected. Or not Harvick. Larson. Um, Larson expected. Um, so I don't think it's as dumb as it looks. And he he did, like, make up some ground that, like, as long – it was basically – he put him in a spot where whoever has the better pit stop was going to come yeah, out yeah. ahead where – if he would have maintained the same distance, Blaney's probably going to come out ahead no matter what because he's got an extra second in the in the pit. Um, but yeah, I just don't. I mean, it looked Blaney was good. arguably too so. slow going in, but I think uh, Larson was arguably too fast. Like I don't think he could have hit past Agreed. that yellow line yeah. without getting dinged. Um, which again doesn't mean as much to him because he's locked in as Spider had said. But um, but yeah, and I'll tell you what, I haven't seen anyone hit a sand barrier. Um, except on like police chases, 
it's 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 mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah, I mean, thank God he didn't hit it head on, obviously. And and I don't think he really knew where the sand barriers were. Obviously, he's on the left side of the car and the sand barriers are over on the right. So once he had gotten around him, they were right there in front of him. So thank God nobody was hurt. But it's a fantastic thing to watch in slow motion. Watch it a couple of times. Yeah, it has happened recently. Um, but I think it was with water. Yeah, with water. Yes. They they filled him, filled him with water instead of sand, which... I would probably be an easier cleanup. Think, yeah, I don't know. Um, but that you still have to drive. So the whole race was pretty clean, like I said. Fifty-five to go, that happens. Forty-five to go, Chastain, John Hunter in the forty-two, right? Finally get him in the forty-two, and JJ Yelly get collected in a crash. Thirty-two to go, Denny has a steering issue and slams into the wall. Finishes thirtieth, right? Thirty-one to go, Truex, who was who sat on the pole, has engine problems and gets parked finishes 29th so it went from being a pretty uneventful race to having uh kyle larson hit the sand barriers have a bunch of guys who people are interested in chastain john hunter jj yelly right representing um is jj the guy who's representing jewish uh, star yeah, yeah. he's a star so. david thing um all of a sudden and then you have two of the playoff drivers truex and denny go down uh and then a pretty cool end to the race it only left one gibbs car in contention once uh denny and truex went down one gibbs playoff car in contention that was chris bell and then bell blaney and byron battled right into the end of the race but chris bell wins at miami making it two playoff finals in a row and that's only in his third uh third and fourth cup seasons right he's only been in there for four seasons he's only 28 years old and he's got two uh, finals, championship uh, races to go to. And now JGR, Joe Gibbs Racing, is the only team to have at least one driver in the championship race since this format started in 2014. So congratulations to Chris Bell. Every you know, year? Kind of likes him. What's that? You mean every year Joe Gibbs Racing every year has since had one? Two, yeah, every year since 2014, only one team has put at least one driver in the championship, and that's Joe Gibbs Racing. That's, that's impressive. Cool. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So congratulations to Chris Bell. He can breathe easy going into Martinsville and then start breathing heavy again going into Phoenix. I, I Real quick, Large. Go. I want to give a shout out to Aaron Flynn, 8766, who just fact checked us. I was reading the comments on our last video, mm-hmm. and he brought up the fact that Kurt Busch also drove a Dodge. So I was Ooh. a little uh, unsure if he did three or four. He did indeed did four. Him and Casey Kane have driven for four manufacturers. So, again, we appreciate all the history that people chime in with. Thank I, you, Aaron Flynn. I love that shit. Um, yeah. After the race, I think one of the only things that was worthwhile uh, with the pit row interviews was Blaney calling Denny a hack. You know, he said, uh, Denny says, you shouldn't drive like a hack, and then he went and he drove like a hack. These two guys were battling it out. I think they were only battling it out for probably a half a lap of the two laps that they spent on each other's door. Right, kind of fucking with each other's arrow, and then all of a sudden Chris Bell had come up behind him. You guys had watched the race, and it wound up being a moot point because Denny had lost control of his steering, s- steering and went into the wall. Was Denny a hack? Was Blaney overreacting? In, in my so, perspective, Denny has to race this guy hard. He was below the cut line. He's one of the guys he doesn't want to have any kind of any more points. But Blaney saw it differently. What do you guys think? Quiggs, you first. Um. I mean, there was a lot, like, which was what kind of made it a great race. There was a ton of battles out there, and uh, Blaney and Hamlin were one of them. I think, if I remember correctly, they were battling for second and third a lot, Mm -hmm. um, which I think there's probably any, like, driver who does that knows, like, hey, we're killing each other while the guy in first is, is just increasing that gap. And then everybody feels a little dumb after they battle. It's like, oh, you, I don't know, somebody eventually wins the second place battle, but the leader now has a three and a half second lead and you're not going to catch them. So I feel like drivers get a little frustrated with themselves when they, when they do that. Um, so maybe that's what it's all about, but I don't know. I think, I, I think, I thought all the battles were, were great. I don't think anybody was doing anything too stupid. So I was watching today, um, Bob Pockers had tweeted out a clip of Blaney. I'm not sure which show he was on or if he was doing an interview with Bob or what it was, but um, Bob asked him about that question, and he basically said that um, Blaney thought that the reaction to his reply was overblown. Like he, he was like half joking, he said. 
So he wasn't really calling Hamlin a hack, which honestly, at the end of the race, I was pretty surprised that he said that. I was unsure of the if it was serious or sarcasm mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, these are two guys that was just on the golf course with the, with the foreplay guys, and they seem to be like buddy buddy and you know cool guys. So for Blaney to go on there and call him a hack after was a little surprising, but now I guess it all makes sense seeing that Blaney said he was like half joking and just busting balls pretty much. But you know that Blaney doesn't have the relationship he has with Bubba. Like Blaney and Bubba, if they were calling each other hacks and stuff, we've we've gone over this in past weeks. Like those guys bust each other's balls incessantly. And Denny's yeah. a little bit of a different animal. And if you look at the Actions Detrimental podcast this week, the title of the episode is That Wasn't a Hack Move. So apparently Denny took it to heart and he probably spent about 20 minutes talking about it on Actions Detrimental, um, obviously defending himself. And it's probably a right time to mention that Denny Hamlin has never been wrong in Denny Hamlin's eyes. So it doesn't, you know, <laughs> he's sort of, you know, watching either Fox News or CNN. But it's, uh, it was one of those things where I thought it was kind of cool racing. Like, watching those guys, there was no contact made throughout. I think that's important to see, too. So I think it made for a more, um, more intriguing race. Spider, at the end of the day, we put a bow on Miami, and we're going into Martinsville. What was the over-unders? What did you see that you thought was impressive, and what did you see that wasn't that impressive uh, at that race? Yeah, so over, I'm going to take the over on Ryan Blaney. Um, I think he was really impressive. And where, where the odds were pre-race, he was probably – one of the last playoff drivers I would have taken. So I was really impressed with the way that he performed this week. I'd probably say the same for um, Christopher Bell. He's a guy I probably would have taken both of his Joe Gibbs racing teammates ahead of him, even despite Martin Truex's uh, recent struggles. And he surprised me winning that race. So um, both those guys, P1 and P2, I would say overperformed. And then a couple other guys in the top 10 that I thought were really good. A.J. Dinger, A.J. Allmendinger has... Sneaky had some of the best stats at my own Miami homestead um, out of cup drivers in the last uh, recent races. So really impressed with him, and he was able to get another good finish within the top 10 here um, this week. And then Ty Gibbs, I know Quiggs um, and Large were talking about him earlier, and I think he's had a really, really strong rookie season, obviously on the outside looking in in the playoffs, but he's still stringing together solid performances, and that's exactly what we saw at Miami. And then the final over... Um, Austin Dillon, I, I don't know, was he in the top ten or just outside of it? But either way, I think he was um, top ten. Uh, he was yeah. ten. He was ten. There you go. So um, another guy I wouldn't have had finishing top ten at at this point in the season. He beat his teammate, and um, I was impressed with his performance. In terms of the unders, I would probably go start with the twenty three eleven cars. Um, I mean, Reddick did finish third, but I needed him to win and I was hoping that uh he could have punched his ticket into the championship four so uh, grain of salt there I mean a p3 finish it can't be too underwhelming but uh Larson as I said previously I'm okay with that move but if I were truly a, a hard Larson fan and begging for him to win every race I would obviously be a little bit disappointed and then the Joe Gibbs racing guys in Danny Hamlin and Martin Truex granted they had some mechanical issues but um Tough finish for those three playoff drivers I named most recently in Hamlin, Truex Jr., and Larson with finishing position. But one more race. Can they punch their ticket? Um, Obviously, Larson's already there. We'll see between Denny and Truex. But we've got a lot to watch for in Martinsville. What did I miss, guys? I got got an under and an over. Let's hear him. Um, LaJoy was hauling it in the first, like the early stages. Um, just up to P7, like not from pit cycles or anything mm-hmm. like that, just straight up was was moving. He fell off towards the end, um, but he had a great car. Um, and then under Truex, I guess Truex's, I don't know if I'll even say Truex's pit crew, but his relationship with his pit crew, yeah. they're, they, they hate each other. Like do. he's beyond done with them. Like, yeah, uh, he said uh, it's a serious issue. Whatever's going on there, because they are blaming each other. They're not getting along. There's something. I thought that bad I thought that he there. retired mid race for a second <laughs> yeah. uh, on Sunday. It, it was close. <laughs> was like, he was, did he just yeah. call off his return for next year? That's fucking. It was crazy. Like at one point, I think he said, "Whatever." 
Like once they had gotten so like, fucking I think it was like a 12 second pit. Yeah. And he, what? I was like, Yeesh. you know, <laughs> that's not a good sign. That whatever is like, it, nothing matters anyway. Like you guys are all gone. <laughs> right. A clean house. And p- particularly for a guy like Truex, who we know doesn't show a lot of emotion. I mean, I have an unsigned corner panel in my fucking garage to prove it. Um, <laughs> so that was a little blast of emotion from him. You mind if I add one? I'm going to, I'm going to throw Michael Jordan in as an over. He finally he finally gave Tyler Reddick some love afterwards. You know, like Chris Bell didn't have a great car. I mean, didn't have a great car. He didn't have a great race until late in the race. He did exactly what he needed to do. I don't know. I, I, like, I don't know if he led any more than like five or six laps, green flag ra- uh, laps. So, but Tyler Reddick seemed like real scrappy at the end, and then Jordan came over and basically gave a pat on the head, like he was an infant. The size you dichotomy between those two is fucking amazing. So, uh, so I'm going to give MJ because I, I shit on him when he didn't do it last time. What's that, Spider? You're right, Large. I just shit on 2311, and they had a pretty good week. They finished third and sixth. <laughs> yeah. Granted, I wanted a win out of them, but you're right. right. If MJ's happy, how can I not be? He's the owner of the team, and he's probably got a pretty good uh, radar in terms of success. So yeah. I, I will rescind my under on the 2311 cars, despite me um, pulling for, for Tyler Reddick hard there. I'll also mention Byron. So Byron has his 20th top 10 of 23. Six wins. So you know, we were talking about last year, I think Blaney was the guy who made it in um, just because he had all those top tens, made it to the playoffs, and they were calling him Mr. Consistency. I, I don't know if you can have a more consistent guy if you've been on every week this week, this year, top tens and to win than William Byron. So, I mean, he deserves even on a you know on a day when he didn't take home the checker, I think he deserves a little bit of uh, of credit. And plus, I have him in uh, in my futures thing. Um, yeah, uh, we, I got him as well. Uh, another surprising stat, Large, while we're on that topic. Uh-huh. Ki- uh, Kyle Larson, the first driver to punch his ticket to the championship four. Eight did not finishes as he got another one this past weekend. <laughs> That's pretty alarming. Uh, Byron, <laughs> Bell, Blaney, Reddick, Truex, they all have three. Yeah. So something that he's going to need to fix here in the last two uh, races. We're going to need finishes, strong finishes in both of them, Kyle. I think it's one of those excellent points, Spider, because it got to the point there for a while that Kyle Larson and Tyler Reddick this year, you thought they were going to win the race or not finish. Like those yeah. were the two guys that I've, I've sort of put into that um, that scenario. Before we go on to this special announcement, we're going to go over paint schemes. We're going to go over paint schemes, and it's brought to you by Cabo Wabo, the official tequila partner of NASCAR. Got a couple of bottles right here if you want to see what they look like when you go and grab them off the shelf. This is the Tequila Anejo, this is the Tequila Resposado, and this is the Blanco right here. So you have a bunch of stuff. Spider has the uh, helmet from when we did the Cabo Wabo 250 down in Michigan, which wouldn't fit over my head because my head is uh, looks like a Rottweiler. Uh, so it's not just tequila. Cabo Wabo is not just tequila. It is damn good, thick cut, 100% blue agave tequila. Blue ever agave. Blue agave tequila, yes. Uh, Cabo Wabo Tequila and NASCAR are teaming up to bring the thick cut flavor to race days at home and at the tracks. The Cabo Wabo Smoke Show is a Cabo Wabo Tequila signature cocktail made for the NASCAR partnerships. We've made multiple at the track, and they are delicious. So your call to action is go get yourself some Cabo Wabo Tequila. Bring that bold flavor to the racetrack or to your couch. Go to CaboWabo.com and learn more. You must be 21 years or older and enjoy Cabo Wabo responsibly. With that, I thought this was a great week for paint schemes. Like I, We, we went in saying this is over. There's no better paint scheme that's going to hit the track than that Budweiser one that Harvick was running. And I was absolutely wrong. I was absolutely, The Budweiser one was very cool and all that shit, but I thought there was a bunch uh, Quiggs, you want to you want to hit him? I mean, I have them all in front of me. What what did you think stood out? Uh, I mean, grimace, yeah. like just I don't, grimace just makes me yeah. laugh, like the idea of it. Um, and yeah, I thought that, and then Tyler Reddick's is very cool too. Yeah, the Hamburglar, right? Um, he the the zebra stripe yeah. Hamburglar. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, well, those are all the ones that stood yeah, out. Yeah, the Night Owl one was cool. If you have any like, we mentioned the Night Owl yeah. going in. Um, and I like to see the Black Hooters car, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, but also, I was I was kind of, I don't know, it was kind of cool to see J.J. Elliott, the number 15 at Homestead, repping the International Fellowship of Christian and Jews. I mean, we know what's going on yeah. in the world. We're not a geopolitical podcast by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, all of a sudden, Yelly, uh, Yelly coming by with the big old star David on the side of his car. I was like, wow, that you don't see that that often. 
I don't remember seeing a Ukraine yeah. car, for example, or anything like that. But um, so either way, there was a lot of shit to look at as far as paint schemes go. I haven't seen anything paint scheme wise going. Into, have you guys seen anything going into Martinsville? I haven't seen it. Oh, you have? I have. Uh, Stenhouse does it again. Stenhouse had a sick Reese's. one last week. While we're on the, the Reese's car this oh, week. Car. Oh, that's that's perfect for for Halloween. It's it's good looking. What did Stenhouse have last week, Spider? He had the uh, uh, like a pink vitamin water, um, super bright, vibrant vitamin water car, which I thought popped. Yeah. Um, and then I also liked uh, Harvick's Bush Heavy scheme, of course. And then, as you guys mentioned, the McDonald's ones were great. Yeah. I just would have loved to see a, a fucking race win. McDonald's diecast would have been sick. Oh, yeah, that would have been cool. So you, you, turned, you totally turned on the 2311 call. You're giving them props all the way around now. They had a good race. As I said, I, I in the end of the over under no. segment, I kind of I kind of walked it back. No, but I, absolutely. I'm more so just I, you know what? I'll take the under on myself because I'm disappointed in in solid results. <laughs> so that's on me. Hand up. I hear you. And with that, let's talk about um, a special announcement. So Robin is racing is going to be uh, at the races in Phoenix um, the November fifth weekend. Uh, the four play guys are going to be there also. I was just talking to Trent Daddy. I think he's coming in on Saturday. We're probably going to do something at the Nashville, uh, the Scottsdale Bar, uh, Barcelona's Bar in Scottsdale on Saturday. So Spider and I will probably be there drinking like we lost a loved one. Um, we're going to be there for the whole thing, particularly on Friday night, particularly on Friday night uh, for the truck race. Uh, people at Kyle Busch Motorsports, we all know that Kyle Busch Motorsports had recently announced that they were, um, that they were sold. They just recently uh, sold themselves to uh, to Spire. And Spider and I have a mutual friend with the people at Kyle Busch Motorsports. And one of the trucks um, was looking for sponsors. And so this mutual friend had put us in touch with a gentleman. And they had offered us the opportunity to run a rub his racing scheme on the number 51. And we're extremely excited about this happening. We went down to Kyle Busch Motorsports a couple of weeks ago when we were in Charlotte and we filmed the sizzle video, which we're going to show to you right now. Dolly, you got to grab my foot. Bang. All right, so yeah, so that's that's fantastic, isn't it, Spider? That's incredible. Super pumped. Um, awesome time at KBM, and the truck looks sick. I mean, it's one thing to have a, a truck in the race, a car in the race, but they nailed the paint scheme. As far as I'm concerned, I love the black. Well, they could have put my, my face on it. Or yeah, we, we should have had Quigs on there. Quigs, would you have came? It's the only thing that's missing. Would you have camp, come to the race if we threw your, your name on the car or something? What would it Maybe. take? Your face on there? It, it's just a moral stance I have. I don't travel. Okay, fair. I hear you. As a result, you don't get on fucking trucks, bro. Right? You got yeah. to <laughs> no, so put in the time. Pay. It's the bet I made. Yeah. So, uh, Kyle Busch Motorsports is the most winningest team in truck series history, right? It is. And the 51 is their iconic truck. I think it has more wins than any other truck that they've ever won. So we've done a ton of cool shit with NASCAR since we resurrected Rubin last year. And the whole process has been great for Barstool. Uh, NASCAR seems to be happy with it. We were with them down in Alabama this weekend, and Barstool's happy with it. So it's it's just been really positive. But I think this is the coolest thing that we've been involved with yet. Having a sticker on a car is great, you know, that's awesome. But having the whole car done up is something different. Dave was lucky enough to have it with the uh, with the one bike car, 
a couple of years back. I think it was in 2019 at, at Talladega. But with all due respect, I think this one's a lot better looking. And it's going to be the championship race. And it's going to be the last time Kyle Busch Motorsports uh, runs. And it's going to be the last time the iconic 51 runs. And that is going to be driven by a young gun named Jack Wood. And it's going to be driven with the rub in his racing stuff just plastered all over it. So we're going to talk to a young gentleman right now who we both like very much. His name is Jack Wood. He's going to be piloting the truck. So we're about to go three wide with Jack Wood right now. All right, so as I had said to you guys, that's a fantastic sizzle reel, and we have a fantastic driver driving one of the most beautiful trucks I've ever seen in my life. Jack Wood, you 23-year-old young gun, how excited are you going into Phoenix for this uh, for this iconic event? I'm going to use iconic a couple of times. How exci- First of all, thanks for coming on Rubbing His Racing. Thanks for repping the uh, brand in the race. Talk to us about how you're feeling going into Phoenix. Yeah, I'm pumped about it. Um, you know, Phoenix is close to home for me. So, uh, you know, it's a, a place that I got uh, a decent amount of laps on, I'd say, compared to the other truck tracks. So um, I'm excited about getting there, excited about having you guys on the truck. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can take the, the last win for KBM and take it from 100 wins to 101. I'll tell you so what, that's hard- that. Go ahead. Sorry, Spider. Sorry. You said, um, obviously, last win for KBM, that could be special. But out of your time at KBM, what has been your fondest memory of your time there? Oh, man, I don't know. There, there's been a lot. Um, you know, obviously, creating a relationship with Kyle has been really cool. And uh, for someone that's, you know, young and new to the sport like myself, to, to get that opportunity to, you know, create a relationship with a, a guy like him has been really cool. But, uh, you know, there was one – meeting we had after texas uh where we qualified second and uh i got get i got put top of three wide in the first corner and uh we went back in the <clears throat> went back in the meeting on tuesday morning and kyle was like what the hell are you doing i said Let's go to the bottom right away so um that was just kind of a, a funny thing that had happened to me throughout the year but you know overall it's just for me it's been a lot of fun to be able to build a relationship with the guys that are as um you know professional at what they do is the guys over at kbm and uh you know, I'm hope, hoping that, uh, you know, Friday night in Phoenix, we can uh, definitely make another good memory. 100 wins, 47 of them are in the 51. Like, this is the truck, right? I mean, this is this is one of the things we're so excited about with you guys. Not only is it, you know, the end of an era, if you want to say that, but it's also, you know, almost like we're parking one of the better trucks to ever be put on a track. Am I, yeah, am, I, I mean, making too, uh, am I making too much of that? Like, I think that I'm, I'm, we're spider. I don't want to speak for both of us, but I will. We're kind of honored with this. Uh, you know, you know, like when we did the so. other stuff, it was kind of cool. Um, we had a part of my cheesesteak thing once run in an Xfinity race. We had the pizza thing, which we had mentioned, which was cool. Clint Boyer had, had, had piloted a couple of cool little things, but for this one, I think there's, it's a real honor for us. Am I making too much of this? No, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, obviously the 51 truck is, uh, it has a special place at KBM, but also a special place for Kyle as well, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it being 51 is Rowdy Burns from Days of Thunder and that's where Kyle got his nickname. And, you know, it's, uh, it's got a lot of history behind it and obviously it's a, you know, proven successful truck. So, um, you know, I don't think you're overselling it at all. I think it's a, uh, it's a cool opportunity for really the both of us to, you know, have a truck that looks as sick as the one we do and have that be the last race for the 51. Obviously historic truck, historic team, Kyle Busch Motorsports. And we saw one of the greatest moments this season as you guys got the hundredth win for the team. What was the celebration like following that? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, you know, for, for me, this is my first year there. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say that I've contributed to the legacy that, that KBM has, but, you know, I just think really for Kyle and Samantha and, and his family, um, to be able to, you know, have that, you know, benchmark and, and have that hundredth win for the organization and what they've built over the last, you know, 15 years has been, uh, pretty cool. So I was happy that they were able to get that. And, um, you know, I think the the guys were excited, but you know, all of them want to win more. So, um, I think they, you know, they celebrated that one and then, uh, got back on it to try to go get one more on the year. I want to mention two things. First of all, good on you guys for the paint scheme in Miami. I know you came in P12 in Miami, but you had uh, over 700, the names of over 700 adaptive athletes from the High Five uh, Foundation 
um, which is adapt and destroy. You had that type of thing. And I, I, th- I thought mm-hmm. that was it was very cool. It seems like you guys just do the right thing with it. And obviously, it's almost weird to say you do the right thing and you put us assholes on the next truck. But it's just kind of <laughs> cool to say. But let me ask you something about the truck series in particular. As me and Spider get more familiar with Xfinity and truck series, is it too short? Is it too short of a season? I think the Cup Series season is too long. There's got to be a, a pleasant middle ground there. What do you think about that schedule? Yeah, I mean, I think that that number at 23 races, I think is, I think it's good. You know, I mean, I think you get too much and too little to where you kind of, you know, you, you make it hard for the smaller guy to get to the racetrack when you start hitting those numbers of, you know, 30 like the Xfinity and Cup Series do. So, um, you know, I think the, the truck schedule, I think is really good. You know, obviously I'd, I'd like to see less gaps in the schedule. Um, but I think we go to the right race tracks. Um, you know, we're there for the big marquee events. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to be in front of the big crowds and, and, uh, you know, build the brand as the team and the driver. But, um, you know, I don't personally, I don't have an issue with the, with the truck schedule. I got two for you in that kind of vein. Um, the short, shorter truck season, obviously, as you mentioned just now, and then you also run part time. How do you find yourself kind of managing the off time you have in between races, and what strategy do you use to make sure you're ready to go when you get the opportunities? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I had 13 this year with KBM, and uh, there's there's definitely off weeks that I have in, in between the schedule, but. You know, I tried to fill those with ARCA races or, you know, running a, a road course car or the dirt or the dirt micro sprint stuff. So, um, you know, you try to stay busy as you can. Um, but, you know, there is downtime where you kind of have to, you know, you, you still get to live a normal life being a, a part time guy. So um, that has been nice. Um, but, you know, it does make it challenging when you're not in the truck, you know, every week and you're For going sure. up against guys that are, that are, you know, getting 10 more races a year than you are. And I know you said you like the. Um the the current truck schedule as it is but i'm gonna give you a hypothetical here i want you to add and remove one track from your current schedule uh i think you take texas off okay you and chase elliott seem to agree there yeah yeah i think you take texas off um and i think you go either to sonoma or you go to canada that would be awesome i would be game for either of those (laughs) Yeah. yeah Are there any are there any cup races you watch that the the truck series doesn't go to when you're like getting FOMO? You're like, damn, I wish we were running that. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I watched that Chicago Street Course race this year, and um, you know, obviously the the weather hurt the their performance of the weekend. But you know, I think you get to you look at you know what that weekend went like, and it makes me think, man, like that'd be really sweet for the the trucks to be able to go there. So that's that's the one that I wish we get a chance to go to at some point um, just for the environment and uh, being able to race in downtown Chicago looks pretty cool. Does. Um, We're going to wrap up in a couple of seconds, but I want to ask you an extremely personal question. First of all, I hope you're up for it. So the, the the official name of this podcast is rubbing is racing with spider and large. You can see it. You can see it here um, behind me. Your uh, design team are huge fans of the show. And when they designed the skin, they had changed it to large and spider. I had nothing to do with that. That was just <laughs> totally bullshit. by coincidence that they took it upon them. And I know spider wasn't talking to them. I was talking to them personally. And by coincidence, they wound up doing it. I'm going to have to have you pick a side because you're going to be looking over that trunk. One of the corner panels says spider and large. All of the merch that we're making is going to say spider and large. But in particular, that trunk is going to say large and spider. I'm going to ask you to pick a side on which one. Consider, though, Spider is very young, very virile. He's got a lot of years ahead of him. I'm at the end of my career, possibly the end of my life. 52, I don't <laughs> I don't keep myself in good shape. Which of the two <laughs> schemes, little, small little details, which one do you prefer? And we'll see. I mean, I'll tell you what, if the one that's on the truck ends up in victory lane, I'll have my favorite. Yeah. Um, but if uh, if we're going to go to uh, Barstool in uh, Scottsdale this week or uh, the weekend of the race, then uh, I guess I'll have to pick my favorite. Then. Damn right. Spider, yeah. we're going to hey, party down with this kid, aren't we? If this kid wins. Large, it. Go. If the if the fifty one truck wrecks, it's because large is before spider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So twenty three year old kid, you're going to be in uh, in Phoenix with us. So you're you're a single guy, Jack? 
Single guy, yeah. Spider is a single guy. I've been happily married for 24 years, but my wife and I are actually divorcing right before I go to Phoenix. So I'm going to be a single guy with you. That's that's a joke. The three uh, most eligible <laughs> bachelors at Barstool Scottsdale. Make sure you see us in Phoenix. I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> me and Spider can go around the table. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> Jack, it's a- I got one more go for please. you, Jack. Yeah, hit it. When, when we were at the shop filming the, the promo video that they just watched and releasing this paint scheme, I saw um, Brexton's little corner of the shop, which I was fascinated with. He's got dirt cars. He's got bandoleros. Now, I'm like 5'5", five, five, a buck 20. Do you think I could fit in inside a bandolero? Oh, we could. Yeah, you could definitely squeeze in. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I don't know what the what the plan is at the shop with the with the bandoleros or the mini cars, but um, maybe we should do a little uh, driving lesson. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah, it's better late than never. You know, you might That's be right. ten years older than these kids up there racing, but if you fit, hey man, you got to go do it. It's just a I matter of it. time before we have a BBM, right? The Braxton Bush Motorsports <laughs> type thing. All right, yeah. listen. Oh, yeah. I need yeah, everyone to listen up. Kyle Busch Motorsports has a record-setting 100 wins between 18 drivers. It holds the record for most owner championships with seven, has two driver championships with Eric Jones in 2015 and some guy named Christopher Bell in 2017. And now we'll have one of their young guns, Jack Wood, wheeling the Rubin is Racing logo for the final race of the season in Phoenix in 2023 on Friday, the 3rd of November. Jack Wood is the guy that you need to keep your eye on in the 51, and Spider and I are the guys you're going to need to keep your eye on in Barstool Scottsdale that night. Jack, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I can't wait to tear it up. Be safe, but either checkers or wreckers, as uh, as Dave was uh, saying. Yeah. Good luck, my friend. Hey, look, Absolutely. Don't be afraid to dump the guys competing for the championship. Our race <laughs> is more important. Hey, it's uh, I've had a couple of them dumping this year, so I still have a couple in the bag that That's I can right. use an excuse. Yeah, if you want a friend, buy a fucking dog. Uh, talk to you soon, Jack. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Right, thank good luck. All right, so that's Jack Wood. He's he's a very he's a very good kid. I say that because I'm so goddamn old, but um, very impressive. Uh, and we're extremely excited again to be there on Friday with him. We're gonna tear it up, and hopefully we can get ourselves a win. I remember David said to who's the guy who drove for, Matt Di Benedetto, right? Wasn't it Matt D? Yeah. And Dave was like check. Yeah. He's I, like checkers or records. I think. So I'm not saying that. Yeah, he ran the the pizza scheme, and then Clint ran the back to back World War champs uh, yeah, Fourth of July scheme. One of the one of the tougher schemes ever run in an NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. Race. So um, so yeah, so uh, congratulations to us and to Barstool, and best of luck to Jack. Let's preview Martinsville. This is brought to you by NASCAR. As I said before, they put together a hell of a season, and we're almost there, boys. We're almost at the end of it. It's been a long season. And it's going to not culminating yeah. in Martinsville. Obviously, we still got Phoenix to go, but we're heading to the paperclip this weekend. The Xfinity 500 is the name of the race. It's on a half mile short track. Christopher Bell is the defending winner of the event. Um, a lot of times, people we talk about grandfather clocks and you know those hot dogs that are red Martinsville hot dogs. I believe they're going to sell seventy thousand hot dogs this weekend. I'd seen that thing. They're awesome. Marginal hot dogs. They put like a vinegar slaw on them with raw onions and some sort of chili. Sign me the fuck up. But it's also going to be littered with um, clips of Chastain's Hail Mary, uh, the uh, Hail Melon, right? Because that had happened when he passed Denny. So expect to see a bunch of that uh, going into the weekend. I will say this. The best average finish among all active drivers is Ryan Blaney with nine and a half. So, Denny Hamlin has won at this track five times. Martin Truex has won at this track three times. Both of those guys don't necessarily need a win, but they should be racing for one. Um, and Ryan Blaney is one of those guys who's sneaky good, even though he does not have a win at this track. So, with that, let's pick the tires. Let's, uh, let's, let's first of all congratulate when somebody makes three bets and hits two of them. It's a big deal. I basically had the script this weekend. Denny Hamlin, a Toyota. And Ryan Blaney in the top three. I hit the Toyota and the top three with Blaney. So that was a, a good feeling. Um, Christopher Bell, I'd said, had won. I just looked before the round of eight. Bell was plus 1,400 to win it all. His future has now dropped to 325. So Chris Bell's futures have dropped uh, precipitously. Who do you guys like this week? Who are we taking in uh, picking the tires? I'm in no rush to go first if somebody else wants to. Quiggs, why don't you start us? I'll go. I have one single pick okay. this week. Just just a winner. Um, I'm going Martin Truex plus a thousand. 
I did, I just he well you you said Blaney has the best average finish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Truex is second, and also has yeah. three wins while Blaney has none. Um, and I don't know. I think he's just mad. I think he's gonna go out there and be and just race his ass off and go in with the mindset of I have to do this myself without a pit crew that's going to help me and feel like he needs to have five, six, six second leads all Mm -hmm. the time because his pit crew will screw him. So I think the pit crew will be better and he'll race with that mindset and he's plus a thousand, I believe. Um, So that's, I'm just going with that. Nothing else. Living and dying with Truex. I don't hate it. Spider? Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit um torn here. I'm not sure what to do this week. I'm I'm intrigued by some of the longer odds guys. I like Quiggs' pick of uh Truex plus a thousand, a guy that's um in that position, probably good value. Um but in that same breath, I kind of am looking at Ryan Blaney twelve to one. If you look at the recent driver averages, which is accounting for races since February twenty twenty at Martinsville, Ryan Blaney's second with seven races there. He's got seven top 20s, five of which were top 10s, four of which were top fives. I think he's worth a little sprinkle. We saw him running good last week, and he's probably going to be, you know, balls to the wall doing everything he can to be the Penske car in the championship four, the Ford in the championship four. So I kind of like Blaney 12 to 1. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it at that this week. I'm a little intrigued by pretty much every other playoff driver, but, I mean, that's just the nature of the playoffs. I really only going to take playoff drivers in the playoffs. Outside of that, I think Logano's another guy that's been running really good here. Last seven races, he's got uh, four top fives, seven top tens. Every race has been a top ten finish for Joey Logano here. Chase Elliott's another one in the last seven races. He's got to win three top fives. So outside of the playoff drivers, I like the guys that are historically good here recently, whether that be Logano or Elliott. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock with Blaney as my one singular pick. Uh, 12 to 1 this week. Let's go, Ryan Blaney. I will say the issue with me and your picks, which I'm kind of thinking about right now, is when you get those guys that are within 10 points of the cut line, a lot of times their goal, their own goal is not to win the race. Just to, And they just want to make sure they're clean, point, point their way in. So I think that is why we're getting the odds we're getting. But I don't know. I, I still – I think they, they still – you just try to win races. Yeah. So. I'm not switching anything, and you probably aren't either, but I think that is kind of like something you should be aware of if you're betting on this. I think that's why yeah. they made it impossible for you to bet Denny Hamlin this week. Uh, that's kind of where I'm yeah. at. I w- Denny's the only guy I ruled out, and then I, I think that Larson and Byron, the Hendrick cars, are both probably worth a little sprinkle um, just given on given based on you know their success this season. So, But I'm going to stick with Ryan Blaney and uh, – I'll be pulling for the Chevy Hendrick boys. We both have championship futures on, but um, I'd like to see Blaney punch his ticket here, twelve to one. I um I was intrigued at Brad K just because he's been driving a lot better than Chris Busher. <laughs> he, he has been yeah. lately. It's significant. Yeah, it's they, it's almost like they they should switch cars or something. But um, so I think I'm going to take a shot at Brad K at a top three. So Brad K to top three is a little over two to one. It's not great odds. It's plus 210. But I like what I've been seeing out of him lately. I also like the Blaney call, um, except I think I'm going to take him same way. I'm going to dupe, but I'm going to go top three Blaney again. And then I'll throw in uh, just a winner just uh, for the fuck of it. So Brad K, Ryan Blaney, top three. And I think I'll throw the plus 800 on William Byron. Put William Byron to win this thing. Um, you know, Mr. Consistency, like I said, he knows how to drive a, a car consistently throughout this whole season. So, yeah, there'll be some desperation out of Denny Hamlin, be some desperation out of Martin Truex. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty amped for this. I'm amped for this race because we already have Chris Bell and Larson punching their ticket. I think we all say that we see Byron making it in. So that coveted fourth spot, I'd like to toss Chris Buescher out, right, because he needs the win. So I am going to toss him out. And then I actually was thinking about tossing Martin Truex out, Quicks, just because no, I, he's had a terrible play. He, he hasn't he hasn't looked good at yeah. all since the end of the regular season, which he won, right? He was a regular season champ. But I almost want to toss him out. So then I'm left with who? I'm left with Denny. I'm left with, you know, Blaney. And I'm left with, oh, Reddick, who not, none of us are touching. 
None of us is touching Reddick on yeah. the short track. And it's probably a pretty good pick yeah. here, too. So it's, uh, um, even though no, none of us yeah, have Yes, so we're not touching him. So either way, really looking forward to that race. And again, expect to see on social us talking about this partnership with Kyle Busch Motorsports as they head off into the sunset in uh, Phoenix, literally, and which we're very, very excited about. Uh, the only other thing that I'll mention is that I'm rocking the uh, Barstool Outdoors collabo with um, Bass Pro Shops. So I'm rocking that. So there's still that yeah. available. Oh yeah. So we got oh matching ones. No big deal. Matt, um, I didn't so even go notice. check that out. Uh, Spider. Anything else going on? No. Come hang out with us. We'll see you guys in Phoenix. We'll be at the uh, Barstool Scottsdale Bar a couple of times. I'm sure throughout the weekend, and um, we're pumped to be doing the partnership with KBM Jack Wood, and we're going to be there Friday, hopefully Saturday, and then of course on Sunday for the Cup Series Championship. So if you're in Phoenix, uh, say hi to us at the track or at the bar, and. Let's let's cap off the 75th uh, season of NASCAR with a with a bang. Perfect, boys. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you guys next week on Rubbin' is Racing.